Hey, good morning, everyone. Absolutely. A lot of institutions look at <coughs> technical analysis. N not that it matters, really. What matters is they work. I mean, you know, technical analysis works on the right stocks. A and most technical analysis is bullshit, but you, you know, that's why it's so important to study what actually works.
what's more important than Tesla is how detached Lucid is from Tesla now. Lucid wants 50, man. TTD missed earnings, but up pre-market. Uh, they didn't miss earnings. They beat. And they beat revenue guidance too. All right, good luck everyone.
Well, you could sum up today in um, three words. Things are going up. For now. So tiki, that's not an EP. Guys, is there any confusion to what an EP is? Like I have two blog posts about an EP. Like it's it's pretty straightforward. Oh sorry, it wasn't an EP. I thought you said it was an EP. No, yeah. Yeah, it's a good setup. I thought you said it was an EP, sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's a good looking breakout. Not sure if it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the news were on this day. Could be a buyout or something. Guys, this is called an easy money environment. You take a position and every day for two weeks, your positions go up. That's called easy money. It's not gonna last forever. But it can last for a long time, if you are lucky.
link, yeah, this is uh, sector EP. We can have follow through, not sure, but it does look good on the on the weekly. And especially on the monthly. And it's reclaiming the 200 day, that's good. <clears throat> Yep, copper is really strong uh, and you know copper stock like stuff like FCX are also related to the infrastructure bill news. All these charging stations need to have uh, you know copper wires and a lot of them. Ura this uranium Stocks are finally starting to go or ETFs. Hope so. I've been long those things forever. Over a month. Come on. Can they finally double from here? Thanks. Lucid dreams, yep, lucid dreams. I have a um, pretty decent position in this thing. Pretty decent position, not gonna lie. Pretty decent position, yeah. I got stopped out here when it gapped, when it, you know, gapped below these moving averages, but I started rebuying. Uh, three sessions ago, I think, or two sessions ago, I don't remember. And on Friday, I had added a lot when it broke this range, this 3790, 38 range. Hey guys, do you have the clip uh, where I did the fundamental analysis on Lucid, the thumb thingy? Has anyone clipped it on Twitch? When it reaches 50, I wanna post it on Twitter. So everyone uh, will understand the depth of analysis we do in this community. And so they can buy my course for nine ninety nine ninety nine. This Palantir reports tomorrow. I'm super excited about this one. It's a big former runner. And look at this thing on the weekly and monthly. Like, like guys, look at this flag on the monthly. Holy shit, if this thing an EP of earnings, oh man. Oh man. Could be insane.
DDD if it has good earnings don't they report tomorrow or sorry after hours they report after hours Kind. Isn't this one of these specs? It's probably trading under another ticker. Yeah, the problem with any is it's, uh, wait, I don't know what the problem with this is. I don't even know. Oh, it's some kind of a, I don't even know what sector this is, but it looks good. It's a big flag if it, you know, the shit stocks are back in, back in play. So, I mean, you know, if it breaks out, it could go. Do I look at any sentiment indicators? Nah, not really. Nah, no, not really. The problem with sentiment indicators is 
during the best periods, like during the free money periods, when 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 they when you know the, the the during the times where most of the money is made as a swing trader or a position trader, sentiment indicators and overbought oversold indicators, they're gonna show excessively bullish sentiment versus like excessively overbought readings. So they kinda they, they, they do work, but they could completely useless when you when you when there is the most amount of money to be made. That's the problem. Look at last year. And early this year, you know, if you follow these sentiment indicators, you would have missed out on life changing money. That's the problem. But they do work sometimes. That's why people use them. Dun, 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 dun. And there's a guy on Twitter that I follow. Um, actually, there's two guys. I don't know which one of them. Is it the next big trader, Kevin Martyr? But one of them said, you know, he stopped using uh, sentiment indicators in the 90s because he saw the same thing. When the life-changing money is to be made, the sentiment indicators will all show over, like uh, excessively bullish sentiment for months, for months on end. And if you sell or get out or out of the market or whatever, go, you know, take a step back during those periods, you're going to miss out on life changing money. Wife changing. Yeah. PPSI. Oh yeah, this is definitely an EP, but is it something that's worthwhile buying? I don't know. Whole star is starting to move too. And remember, you know, on these st stuff like Lucid, you know, remember the trail. If you're in it, this thing, remember to, you know, don't get too excited. Yeah, like this thing could go up another fifty percent. Don't, don't just randomly sell everything into strength. It's better to sell a partial too little bit too late than too early. Better to sell, you know, 10% too late than 100% too early. I'm not saying it, it can, it, it will double, but it can, like, like the volume is just insane. This whole sector is, it is the leading sector of the market. And the volume is just insane. Like I haven't seen this type of volume since AMC back in May, June. Look at how similar Lucid looks to AMC or, uh, you know, look at this thing. If you sold AMC here, like, oh, I got a nice move. I got a 50% move in a couple of weeks. Well, guess what? You, you would have gotten another 300% in the next week. I'm not saying Lucid is going to do anything like it. Probably not, but, you know, it, it could realistically do, you know, 
much bigger moon than this. So don't forget the trail. We get the... Uh, is it the Rivian IPO tomorrow? As long as Tesla doesn't break down, these EVs are gonna go nuts. If Tesla breaks down, loses the 10 day, then I may be a bit worried. But uh, unless that doesn't happen, I think these things can make insane moves. Wednesday, okay. Yeah, F FSR is another, uh, there's no setup there though. And it's a laggard, it's a big time laggard. <laughs> ENVP. Oh yeah. Yeah, it had several flags on the way up. I think someone mentioned it here, but I, I kind of dissed it because I thought it was already getting a little bit extended, but <laughs> yeah. Great job, great job. This is why you need to build your own conviction and not uh, trust, you know, rely on someone else. So important. You need to build your own conviction in these setups. Yeah, I would definitely size down on things before they close. I'm a little bit too heavy. I bought TTD. I bought these. I I uh, bought these uh, oil ETFs, Gush and NRGU or energy ETFs. Um, so I will definitely size down whatever doesn't act well I'll, I'll sell or size down because we are getting a little bit extended in the indices so you don't you don't want to you know get caught with your pants down on on, on heavy margin you want to be proactive anything that doesn't act right with the indices, you know, straight up, it needs to be sized down. It needs to go, or you need to move your stops aggressively. But if you're not using any margin, you know, don't worry about it. Just use your trailing stops and. Mara, where I bought it, I bought it here. Uh, in the 36s, I think, or 35s. It wasn't a great setup in itself, but it was in a very hot sector, so that's why I bought it.
Kiwi Chio. Uh, is it the good EP? Uh, I, I don't know. Is it going up or is it going down? What should, an, what should a good EP do? Yeah, AFRM, yeah. You know, the best stocks, they won't let you in. That's, you know, they won't let you in. And I'm so pissed, man. I had this thing on the EP here, like 97, 98 bucks. I had decent size. You know, it's up 75% since, but no, it stopped me out. And then I rebought it here, like one, I, I don't know, 112, 113, something like that. And it stopped me out. <laughs> and now it's in the 170s. Yay. Super easy. Trading is so easy. Everyone can do it. Da, 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 da. Now look at this the oh what's the growth on it? I didn't even look at numbers. 38, 39. Okay, that's decent. And look at this TTD. It's breaking a you know a long like year long range here, and it's been building higher lows for like a year. You know EPs are not always, but many times these EPs are where um, you know a new trend starts. And today is a potential for that. It's already traded twice the average volume. It traded like if you look at it, the first five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever, 20 minutes, it traded the whole, uh, you know, it traded average daily volume before it broke out on the five minute chart. So the volume was on the table before it, before the breakout, before the opening range highs. So these are the type of EPs you're looking for, you know, preferably, you know, not always, but many times, you know, stocks that are already in an existing uptrend over the past, you know, six months or a year or two years or whatever. And then and preferably they have higher lows for many months. And then they kind of break out of those big ranges on an EP or it could be earnings or, or some kind of other EP. Those are my favorite ones where the technicals and fundamentals converge. Those are the best. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a crazy week for earnings. There's gonna be a lot of interesting stuff reporting. Oh man, and I don't, I don't have any buying power for those. <laughs> I need to think about, you know, sizing down everything that's slow or you know just not performing to get into new blood. Could they to get roll it into five star EPs? We'll see. Haven't determined yet. But I will definitely probably get rid of 10% of my exposure before the close. These cannabis yeah, stocks are waking up. Another laggard beaten town sector starting to move.
Stocks moving out of a base, just they that have earnings happens all the time in a good market, all, all the time. Well, we didn't have a mania last November. And we're not having a mania now. Last November, we were just coming out of a range and that was the start of a four or three month bull run of easy money. That was the start of three or four months of easy money, especially look at like Russell. Broke out early November and you know, didn't top until early March. I'm not saying this time is going to be the same, you know, we could easily go lower. Uh, but right now, there's a lot of things waking up. New sectors are waking up. And now this Polestar thing is moving. I don't have more any more buying power for these EVs. Oh yeah, guys. If what's been going on for the past three weeks goes on for another three months, I will seriously maybe not trade again for, for a long time, man. <laughs> I may take that vacation. If my returns next three months are anything close to my returns from November to March last year? Oh my fucking God. That's all I'm gonna say. Having said that, this is the top. Just kidding. What if Lucid actually goes to like 100? A man can dream, right? A man can dream. How many positions am I in? Is that a serious question? Like really? What if there was a magic way to find out how many positions I'm in? <laughs> uh, what's this? Planet Labs over network satellites, uh, whatever this means. Nah, it's fine. I, I'm not even close to 30. Once I get to 30, that's that will probably be the, be the top. <laughs> like guys, seriously, friendly reminder. Following the instructions on the screen is mandatory. Yeah, those Lucids are pretty nice. The Rivians are nice too, man. They're really, really nice looking cards. Now, are they gonna be like great quality, build quality? I, I don't know. Are they gonna, you know? I probably wouldn't want to be a buyer of the first generation of these cars. You know, there's gonna be a lot of issues probably. But they look awesome. Like they really do the Rivians, the Lucids, all of these. Like you know the uh, the Chinese EVs. Like they they look they look amazing. A lot of them, they really do. What kind of car do I drive? Uh, the kind that has four wheels. You work as an electrical engineer for Volvo EV cars? Yeah. Like Polestar has uh, had a lot of issues. They had a lot of recalls. 
I know that. But you know, look, Tesla had a lot of issues too in the beginning, like a lot of issues. And that's why everyone was so bearish in the early years. <laughs> but now they had, you know, a lot of these issues fixed and now they're ahead of everyone else. Yeah, look, look at look at where this tesla found support there was a guy in on twitter that says he did, didn't understand the logic of the mo of moving averages he thought you know technical analysis is crap i told him study thousand of the biggest stock market winners over the pa last hundred years and you'll understand why i use moving averages and you know who cares about the logic really if there's something that you will, you know, works over and over again, but you don't understand why it works. You don't, you, you know, you don't pass on that. You use it, right? Because if you don't understand it, maybe no one else understand it either, right? But who cares? You go to the grocery store or you go buy a yacht. No one is going to ask you, hey, did you understand why you bought the stock you made all this money on? No one is going to ask you that. You have the money in the bank. No one is going to ask you if you understood the logic behind the trade. What does UPS to do? It goes up. That's what it does. Oh, well, it, today it goes down. They have earnings tomorrow, I think, after hours. Could be interesting if it breaks out on earnings. The 50 day has caught up and, you know, could have another leg higher. <sighs> oh man, I mean so many things right now. <sighs> it's all, it's kind of stressful being in this many. Oh, coin. Oh, they report tomorrow. I hope this coin can go to 360, 370 plus before earnings. So I have a little bit of, you know, pro, uh, caution in case it gaps down on earnings. I, I wouldn't want it to gap down below my stop. That's not fun. You always want to be in a position of strength and not caught with your pants down. What was my percentage return during November to market? November to March period? Um, uh, I don't know. Honestly, I haven't checked. Uh, I could actually check it. No. But it was probably, you know, two, three hundred percent, if not more. No, more. Three, yeah, three hundred maybe. During that three month period. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, trying to understand everything. If you know something works, you shouldn't overthink, you should just go with it. You don't need to understand why this or that is going up. The fact that it's going up and acting technically well, and especially if it's a leader, right? Because you have to understand like a lot of times in the markets, markets and stocks, they many times fall, uh, you know, move before the fundamentals become obvious. Especially when it like these cyclical type of stocks, you know, when the when when the cyclical type of names, when they start getting good earnings, they could already be up for you know, five hundred percent a year later, right? And then you get the good earnings. <clears throat> Uh, 
Hey, Lucid, what what is this candle? What's going on? Did Kenny Boy find Lucid? Fuck. This should be at 50 already. Look at Kenny Boy. Shorting with a market order. There's a new YouTube video of me. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I even retweeted it, I think, if I remember correctly. ENDP. Uh, ENDP. I, I think what's uh, driving this stock is it's involved in these uh, opioid names and the all, all the opioid names like MNK2. Uh, wait, they're not listed anymore. Uh, and also I think Tiva. They have all these lawsuit uh, overhang on them. And I think I saw some news that the uh, these or at least one of these opioid names actually won one of these lawsuits. So I guess, you know, it's some of this, that pressure leaving. I, I, this is not, if you look at estimates, this thing is estimated to have, you know, negative earnings growth for the next couple of years. So it's definitely not earnings driving it. It's more like, you know, some uncertainty and pressure is lifting. So you have to understand what's driving a stock. Not always, but it's good to understand what's driving a stock. But in case of ENDP, it's not earnings. Yeah, lawsuit tossed. What is driving QS? A story, a story about the future, a story where electric vehicles will have four, four or five times the range they have today. A story when everyone has uh, like, I don't know, a Tesla power wall at home with their own backup energy. That's what driving, driving QS. Maybe I'm wrong. That's my understanding of the <sighs> why it's moving. When electric yacht, you know what? I can't wait until they start doing electric yachts, like on massive scale. But the battery technology needs to get better. Right now it's not, the, the capacity is not enough. But man, that would be awesome. Because the engines do make a lot of noise. I'm not gonna lie, they do make a decent amount of noise and vibrations yeah p oh yeah that's ptra yeah yeah that's also um are they doing what type of ET evs are they like scooters or something ev scooters uh, oh heavy duty vehicles trucks and buses oh okay Yeah, the whole sector, the laggards are also waking up. There's so much going on. You have Tesla, you know, going nuts. Remember, this is not a mid-cap stock. This is a $1.2 trillion stock. It's up 50% in, what, three weeks? I mean, the magnitude and scale things are going on here, it's just insane. With the exception of maybe Volkswagen in 2008, has a stock ever gained like, I mean, I don't know, 
how many hundred billion dollars of market cap in, in three weeks? has to be some kind of a new record. It's just insane The you know, it's insane. That's why all these, you know, EV names, these la other ones like Lucid and there's so much interest in them. Yeah, he has a tax bill coming too uh, from uh, uh, options. So he needs to, I think it was 15 billion or something. Doesn't mean anything. Totally irrelevant. Dun, 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 da, da, da. Solar panels on sales. I think there are already solar sales. I think it there it's already invented. Solar sales. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I've seen uh, or read about it. His brother sold his shares. Who cares? Oh, BE, nice. Another one of these alternative energy names. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, AMC looks good on the on the weekly, monthly. Looks really good. GME too. GME looks even better. <laughs> Oh, they report to, oh, this one reports today and she, oh, they both report today. Okay. Not that I think the earnings matter on them. We already know they're overvalued as fuck, but what we care about is the reaction to the earnings.
why I held BE into earnings. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Where do you get that from? I didn't hold it into earnings. I bought it on earnings. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You mean, uh, yeah, I, I, oh, never mind, never mind. No, I bought it on the contract news, on the EP here. And why I hold it into earnings? Because it was acting well. Is Lucid a 50 yet? Guys, I'm not gonna go to the bathroom until Lucid is 50. Fuck! It's going the wrong direction. Okay, I take it back. Someone should clip that. That was actually kind of hilarious. Is anyone clipping that, please? <laughs> Peloton? Yeah. And it's kind of funny the charts told the story even before. Uh, have you noticed that the, the ones, the stocks that gapped up, they had, you know, they were strong. They held up really well or actually went up into earnings. You know, look at stuff like uh, Lending Club, right? Um, look at something like, you know, this was strong into earnings and kept going on the next earnings. Um, damn, now I don't remember all these other tickets, but the, the weak ones, look at Roku, was super weak. Every pop was sold and it had earnings went low, even lower. Same thing, Peloton. Sue max like shit, probably gonna go lower too. It wasn't that funny. Okay. Yeah, Snap too. Actually, Snap held up really well. But yeah, it got shredded, got shredded. Oh, now, oh, oh, a lot of people clipped it. Okay, let's see. Be right back. Hey, thanks for the clips, guys. I, I found, um, yeah, they were really good. Thanks for clipping it, guys.
Oh, for fuck's sake. Guys, spot on the five minute chart where Kenny Boy started shorting. Yeah, Blink got rejected at the 200 day, couldn't reclaim it. That's, you know, you, you want the EPs. When you have these EPs and, you know, you, you want them to kind of gap up over the moving averages. Generally, a PTRA, look at where it got, you know, stopped right at the 100, declining 150. You know, strong EP needs to gap up over resistance levels. Or like these moving averages, preferably, most of the time. Sometimes they do work anyways, but you know, if they can't gap up over the moving averages, if it's in a sideways or downtrend, it's a sign of weakness, not of strength. You know, stock can be up on the day it can be weak and a stock can be down on a day, it can show strength. Yeah, Roblox is also something I'm excited about. Roblox, ideal scenario gaps up over this 86 area and even better if it can gap up over this 91 area. And then, you know, have, you know, have, have good earnings, big beat and big volume. You know, that's the secret sauce. I hope the same for Palantir. This thing looks insane on the monthly. Like, you know, it went up to, and like, this is a large cap stock. It ran like 300% in two months or three months, you know, you know, it could easily go, go up 50, hundred percent on a good EP. And especially in this market, when you have market that's in rally mode, you know, crazy things can happen. But don't get complacent, you know, it's easy to, you know, start buying things and get sloppy and, you know, you end up with, you know, full margin and then, you know, suddenly one day everything is down 20% and you're sitting there with pants down. You always gotta, you know, keep attention what's working, what's not working, what's showing weakness, what's stalling.
TTCF. Well, looks like a piece of turd. The float is 1.7 billion on PLTR. And that is, is that relevant in any way? Well, Tesla has a float of uh, almost a billion and it has a market cap of, you know, gazillion trillion and it, it's up 50% in three weeks. But guys, you have to understand what's relevant data and what's irrelevant data. gaps to get filled jumping without news irrelevant it's in the hottest sector and it's a huge volume that's all that matters that's the news that's the fundamentals Oh, has Kenny Boy uh, started covering yet? Where is Lucid? LCID. Damn, I should have bought B though. Fuck. Instead, I bought GBTC, which is a big laggard. Uh, uh, or not a laggard, but it's, I don't know. Beetle looks much cleaner. Are you on a, well, I do have Coinbase since like 2017, but I haven't funded it or it's kind of defunded. But whatever, man, there's so much money to made in the stock market also. So, you know, I, I don't care, man. I'll probably, you know, once once the stock market comes down, maybe I'll move like 10 million or something into one of these crypto brokers. But right now, I just, you know, <laughs> I just want to maximize my profits here. Oh yeah. yeah, when you see like the, uh, was it uh, one of these uh, SHIB accounts? You know, some guy had bought $8,000 worth of SHIB like, I don't know, a year ago and now it's, or it was worth like 6 billion or something. Like one of the greatest trades of all time. I, I mean, that that's just insane. The, the things... You know, seeing these things and reading about these things, you know, it, it kind of messed with, with folks' brains. And that, that's why I think we're going to, you know, 
have a we have at least a good solid few months left of this this, this bull run, uh, both in crypto and in stocks. I I think you know, you know people you keep reading these crazy stories. You've seen Solana make enormous move this year. You, you know you see Chib, you see Doge, L like it kind of fucks with people's brains, and you know so, you know. People are like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll buy. I just buy some of this, and then you know, five hundred million people around the world decide that you know what? Fuck it. My retarded neighbor just got rich of the shit coin. I'm gonna put my money, some of my money, in in in, in some some of these coins too. No, it, it's true. Imagine being like someone who thinks they're really smart, really sophisticated, and then they have this like retarded family member or a neighbor or, or whatever that strikes gold on crypto, like some total shit coin. Imagine what that does to some people. Some people don't give a shit. But I think some people would, it, it does something with their brain. Technicals are working in crypto too. The sky is blue. Hey, Ferusel. Awesome. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, GME, AMC waking up. They have earnings after hours. Let's see if they can, you know, if they act well tomorrow. Have I ever used the 
time difference between US and Sweden bought EPs before US opens? You mean pre-market? I rarely trade pre-market. I found every time I try to buy, uh, even if it's, you know, if it's something really liquid, every time I buy in pre-market, it stops me out. Yeah, every every shit stock is starting to move now. Yeah, that's how these you know momentum cycles work. First, you have the leaders going. Then you have the ter secondary uh, movers. Then you have the tertiary, and you know the longer you know the run goes on, the more and crappier stocks start moving. And after a while, they're really gonna reach the bottom of the barrel. It's the same thing, you know, playing out again. We haven't, you know, last time we saw something like this was earlier, you know, January, February this year. Yeah, exactly. That's how, we, and you know, th this is why, you, you know, these things happen over and over again. It's, it's just human psychology. It's human nature. If you understand these things, you have a skill for life and it, it's, it go, it's not just in the stock market or a crypto market. It goes for everything. That's just how things work. The third, yeah, the third series stocks, yeah, they're the last one to go. The ones to go. <laughs> third Terry. third Terry or third Terry? I don't know how to uh, pronounce it. No, third, not tertiary, tertiary, third. Oh man, these are the times we, we, we live for, man. I, I'm not gonna lie that for me personally, like the March to September period was, it was challenging. It was up, it was down, it was up. I, I you know, I had a drawdown, then I was back to uh, where I was in early March and I had a drawdown again, then I was back to where I was. I just couldn't get, it, it reminds me of um, 2015 where I went sideways for nine months was the same thing I had a, except in 2015 I was a very unsophisticated trader uh, I had much deeper drawdowns this time I, ha I had like a maybe 15% drawdown or maybe 20% if you count with the money I, I wired out after the March February March run but you know it was challenging and I missed a lot of big opportunities man I I, I kind of there were there were big opportunities. I just kind of missed a few and fucked, you know, just messed some up too. But now we're back in easy money markets. Oh yeah, I have taxes coming due uh, in like next week. Got a wire, uh, <laughs> a shit ton of money, man. Oh fuck.
I don't do SKV, SKV files. I, I do it on paper. I fill it. I fill the PDFs and then I print them out. I I I go full boomer. Yep, boomer alert. Because the thing is, I can't do the SK, SKVs because they only accept like a hundred lines or something, and I usually do like a thousand lines. So I have to do like I can't actually do it digitally. It's so stupid. I usually do like 80, 90 pages of K4s. Hedge currents exposure? What are we in the 70s? Who the hell exposes currents exposure? No one has done it since the 70s, 80s. And how the hell are you, do you even know what way the currency is going to go? What if you lose money on your hedge? <laughs> Where is Lucid? I need to go to the fucking bathroom. Where is Lucid? Come on. Well, well it's, it's, it's kind of... Will it undercut, you know, yeah, we'll see. Oh yeah, absolutely. Y you need to have some, you, you, you can't just randomly buy or short stocks. You, or, or, or shorting, you know, parabolics doesn't matter, but <clears throat> like buying, you need to have something that's a reason to go up. You know, pure momentum is enough, but if you want to get to the like 100 million level, you probably need to, you know, have some type of fundamental driver for it. You don't ever need to read a balance sheet, but you need to, you know, th th there needs to be, what, you know, something driving it, you know, a sector or a theme. Or earnings. Like you, you, you want to, you need to be able to read where the money is going. That's the number one job of a trader. You need to be able to understand where the money is flowing. And just using technical analysis is not going to cut it. Insider trading, I don't care. Couldn't care less. I don't care, you know, like a big part of these can slim guys, they look at what funds are in a certain stock or if the funds are going up. It's completely useless, guy. Like, it's like, oh, look at this stock, it doubled. Oh, look at this, look at this. The, the, the amount of funds doubled. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Talk about the trailing indicator. It's so funny when they talk about, oh, look at this fund. Yeah, the amount of funds increasing. Yeah, no shit, because the share price has been going up. <laughs> it's so funny.
<sighs> What's going on, guys? You don't think GME earnings is today? No? Um, no, it says September 8th AMC. Hey, hey guys, listen to this. AMC reports November 08 AMC. Har, har, har. You thought it was 10 p.m. GME, not AMC, that GME reports AMC and AMC? I agree. I, I think that's true. Kenny covering LCID? Yep, there it is. Get lost, Kenny boy. It would be funny one day if I met Kenny Boy. Chances are I'm gonna hit, uh, meet Kenny Boy's hitman.
Hitman meets, meets Wickman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Is this a frothy market? It's getting frothy, maybe. We haven't seen any super crazy stuff yet. Well, if you, you know, we had DVAC and Fun, but they were kind of, you know, in the early in the bull run here. They happened kind of early. We haven't seen any like late type of craziness yet. Uh, unless you, you know, count Tesla going from like, I don't know, 700 million market cap to 1.2 trillion in like uh, three weeks. But I'm talking about, you know, smaller stocks doing some really crazy shit that we haven't seen yet. And unless we start seeing that, that's when I would, you know, get a little bit cautious. Not, not that it means that there's a top or anything, but, you know, it's time to kind of maybe size down, especially if you're a margin, take a step back. Man, I feel like a genius selling AMD now. <laughs> I sold it in the like 137s, 136s. Because it looked extended. Yeah, we are. That's okay. I, I, I rolled the money into faster moving stocks when I, you know, a AMD had ADR like 3.6 when I sold it. I, I bought stuff that was faster. Like I, that money went into Lucid that's ADR of 9.4, you know, almost, a tr you know, more than twice.
Oh, that was funny. Oh, but I'm not gonna post anything more to Twitter, man. <laughs> Enough. Oh man, I haven't been this active on Twitter for a while. In a while. Ropple says you get all the downside, but not the upside with GBTC. Well, have you verified it's true? Have you verified that's actually true? So let's look at the, well, yeah, GBTC is, it is trading at 15% discount to Bitcoin. That's true. Um, you know, it's up 120% from its July lows. Bitcoin is up. 120%. So yeah, I, I don't see where you get all the downside and none of the upside. Debunked. This is why you always need to verify. Someone says something you need to verify. Is that true? That's bullshit. Not true. Yeah, people take things at face value. Someone says something, oh, it does it true. You need to double check everything. Especially when they're, it, you know, especially these things that take like five seconds to look up, like I did with Bitcoin and uh, GBTC right now. It took me like, what, five seconds? Okay, 15 maybe. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, man. It's not, it really is not. Simple stuff, man. Keep it simple. Well, that's an illusion, guys. I I'm gonna tell you why not being to be able to trade 24-7 is an edge. 
Now imagine, you know, trading. I'm not talking about like hodling, but literally like trading, you know, this crypto. It's open 24 seven. You can never relax. You can never, you know, like take time off because it feels like you're missing out. It's all this in back of your mind. It's not an advantage. It's, it's, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. If you buy it right, you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Oh, Elon Musk is gonna sell his shares. Oh my God, Tesla's gonna gap down so much on Monday. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell my shares on the FTX exchange because it's such a big advantage being able to trade on the weekends. And now look at it. That's what's gonna happen more than uh, more often than not. It's an illusion, guys. For, forget about it. There's there's no edge in being to, you know, if you buy things right. And now shit is always gonna happen, but you're gonna get shaken out. Needlessly, also, a lot of times, you know, you see something gapping down, right? And by the time the uh, market opens, like for the few, uh, you know. The gap is gone. Everything is fine again. That's going to happen more, more than enough. It's an illusion that you gain an edge. Trust me on that one. It's happened to, to me so many times from like really thin stocks that I can't sell in after hours of pre-market. They kind of gapping, gapping down in pre-market or whatever. And by the time they open up, they're well above my stock, my stop, right? And you know, if I had could, if I could have sold it, if it was liquid, I would have sold it, right? So it, it's kind of an illusion. You think it's an edge, but it's not. You know what an edge is? Being able to sh shut off most of the most of the trading day and on the weekends, and then be sharp as hell when the markets are open, that's an edge. Being able to trade twenty four seven, not an edge. Unless you're a computer, unless you run algorithms, that's a different thing. Oh yeah, 24-7 trading means you, you, you have 24-7 opportunities to get screwed. Yeah, true. Don't trust anything what I say. You must verify first. True, very true. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've gotten these business proposals. People want to buy, you know, develop an algo with me. You can't algo this shit. It's highly discretionary. You, you can't algo it. You can't run a statistical analysis on, uh, on like, on these things. You, you can't run, you can't make an algo of investor psychology. 
you, you can't create an algo of, you know, people's brains breaking, seeing their dumb neighbor getting rich. You, you, maybe you can make an algo of it in 20 years, but right now you can't do it. You can't. And you can't, if you're an algo, you can't do the thumbs method either. That's true. Oh, da, da, da. man, now AMC is really going. I just, you know, having a little bit of a lack of a buying power. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't have bought it anyway, since, um, you know, the earnings, you never know. You never know. Lucy is starting to come back. We could could be in a stage where a lot of these stocks, like let's take some, you know, some of the stocks I'm in, like stuff like QS, BE, LS, LAC, Lucid, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They, they could, you know, they could just, you know, they could start speeding up. That's where uh, big money is made. That's where the life changing money is made. You know, if you catch some of these stocks that really, you know, speed up and do something crazy, you know, if you can just catch a few per year on, you know, like okay size, it's going to change your life. No, oh. it's kind of nice that I sold um, a third of my Soxel on Friday because I thought it was getting overextended. You should have never entered PBX is the coin. Oh, Paradox Interactive. <laughs> nah, actually, I'm not regretting it. 
because the reason I sold it is because I, I was a margin. I wanted to, you know, roll that money into fresh blood. I don't regret it. It's, it's the right thing to do. You know, when, you know, it's AMD too. I don't regret selling it on Friday. I, I don't, it's, it's, you know, I, I did the right thing because I rolled in the money into stuff that I thought had, you know, probabilistically better forward returns. But yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Oh, now it's, you know, AMD, it's, it's up 40% from where I bought it. It was one of the first stocks to break out from solid base. The AMD and Nvidia were among the first ones to break out once uh, Nasdaq found its footing. Actually, it broke out before Nasdaq broke out. That's what leaders do. Same thing with net. This thing started also going higher before the market found its footing. I know I can't outsmart the 10 and 20. It's, it's pathetic that I try. Okay, I, I need to go and eat something. But I promise not to go to the bathroom until Lucid it's 50. All right, guys, thanks for joining. See you tomorrow. Good luck.